Welcome to this fifth video in the series on setting up your development environment on Windows. And before we begin, let me note that you can do this whole workshop without doing any of the things that are happening in this video. You can just run the whole workshop in Google Collab in your browser, independent of your device. However, if you don't want to rely on Google, if you don't want to use Collab, or if you want to have a more advanced environment setup, you can follow this video. However, you don't have to. Also, please note that there are many, many ways of how to do this. And this comes ultimately down to your personal preference. And I'm just going to show you one way on Windows, because I assume that this is going to be the platform most of you are going to use. For this environment, we're going to use Windows 10. And then we're going to install Git, a version control system. You don't necessarily need to have Git for this workshop, but it is useful to have in your environment. For Python, we are going to use Anaconda. And Anaconda is a commercial but freely available distribution of Python that already includes a lot of the tools and things necessary to do research and science with Python, and I recommend using Anaconda. However, there are many ways of getting Python and of how to run Python on your computer. As our editor, we are going to use Microsoft Visual Studio Code. And again, this also comes down to personal preference. So you can, of course, do whatever you want here. But these are the tools I'm going to show you for this particular development environment that I would recommend for you if you are a beginner. All right, let's have a look at how we do this and let's start. So here we have a fresh installation of Windows 10 on a virtual machine. And I'm now going to go through all of these steps necessary. So let's start with Git. And I'm on Git dash scm.com and git is a distributed version control system and if you have accessed the workshop on github github is a provider for git repositories you've already encountered that at least on the surface level so we're going to download git for windows and again for this workshop we're not going to really utilize git but we're just going to use git to download the files that we need so i'm going to download git here and I'm going to pause the video from time to time just to skip over things like downloading files, but just download Git for Windows. Of course, it's also available for all other types of systems. This will take you to that page here, and then your download should be starting. If not, you can just pick the installation here. I would not recommend to use the thumb drive edition if you do not know exactly why you would need or want that. And once the download has finished, we're going to proceed installing. Git. I have downloaded all three of these tools here already, so don't get confused by that. So I'm just going to click on Git and I'm going to execute that. And now the installer has a lot of options, but generally speaking, you can just rely on the defaults here. So I'm just going to do that. But of course, you could make uh, changes here if you know what you're doing. But generally speaking, the defaults are fine. And now Git is being installed. And with Git, you'll also get a variety of useful tools along the way that allow you to do a lot of the things that you could, for example, only do on a Linux machine. Although, of course, if you wanted to do this in a more advanced fashion, you could also use the Linux subsystem for Windows. But if you don't know what that is, you don't need it probably at this point, at least. Okay, so now we've got Git. We don't need to launch it. So let's just um, keep that there and let's proceed to Visual Studio Code or editor. And Visual Studio Code is just an amazing text and code editor that we can use if we want to work on Python, but to be honest, on any language or project. It's also very useful to edit text files. So it's a very useful tool, for example, in doing corpus linguistics. Again, we're going to download this for Windows. So click the download button, then click the Windows button. And then your download should start and you also get some preliminary information here. As I've already downloaded that, I'm just going to open up up here. So same procedure. And here, fortunately, we don't have to do as many options. So we're just going to, again, use the defaults here. Um, and you can probably rely on that in most cases. Um, again, have a look at what these do, but generally speaking, you can rely on the defaults, at least if you don't have other editors and stuff installed that you, that you want to use because Microsoft uh, Visual Studio Code is going to install itself as your default editor. 
Okay, we're also not going to start this now, so let's finish that. And now for the centerpiece, let's install Anaconda and install Python. Um, so for Anaconda, anaconda.com, we need the individual edition. As you can see, there's also a commercial edition, a team edition, an enterprise edition, and so on. So we're going to use the individual edition here, which is free. Click on download and then pick the Windows 64-bit version, and we're going to get Python 3.8 with that by default. However, if you have Anaconda, it comes with a variety of tools to keep your system updated and to install new versions. So if a new version of Python came out, for example, you could use Anaconda to do that. Again, already downloaded it, so let's open the installer. And again, I'm just going to install this for me. I'm going to use the defaults here and now also keep this to the default for now. It will make things a little bit easier. And I'm just going to wait a second for this to finish installing. This will take a while, so I'm just going to pause the video for a second. So the installation has now finished, and we are now more or less ready to go. So I'm not going to start a tutorial here. However, you can have a look at the tutorial because Anaconda can do a lot, and we're only going to use a very tiny portion of it. That is the Python distribution. All right, we are now ready to go. And I just want to show you a couple of things that are relevant to this workshop. So if we open up our start menu now, we will find a new entry for Anaconda, Anaconda 3. And particularly, we will find the Anaconda prompt. And if I'm going to open this up, we will get a command line and don't freak out you can type commands in here this is the non-powershell version so it's a little bit easier and we're going to use that i'm going to show you what you can do here so the first thing you can do is now you are in a conda environment and this is indicated by these brackets up front here so we are now in the base environment that is your default python environment now without going into too many details here you can have multiple versions or environments of python on the same computer and this is the base version. We're going to pretend that there's only one, although this is not necessarily a best practice. And if we are going to install, for example, extensions or libraries, we're going to install them into the base environment. And usually this is not recommended, so you should have an individual environment per project. If you're interested in that, have a look at the documentation that Anaconda or Conda provides regarding managing environment. And you could create your own environments here, but I'm not going into details here. Just keep in mind that this is not necessarily a best practice. Okay, back here, if we type Python and just run that, we now are within Python and this is Python 3.8.5. And we could now run commands such as print hello world. And now we have a working Python environment here. So you can exit out of that. And now we can also do other interesting things. So let's go through this one by one. So the first thing I want to do is I want to download using Git the workshop files. So on GitHub here, we find the repository. This is not necessarily the state in which you will find that. And then under code, you can copy and paste this URL here. And now within our shell, we can just type a git clone, then do a right click and that will paste that in and press enter and now git will download this repository and now we can cd for change directory into this new directory the directory is called python programming and you can press tab to finish that so if you just write in that case python and then press tab your system will automatically um, fill in this folder now we are in that folder and now within that folder we can type dir directory to see all the files. So let's move into 2020 because this is where the actual files are. So change directory 2020, dir again. And let's go into scripts because in scripts we have actual Python scripts. Let's type dir again. And I'm going to do this repetitively. And now we can do things like run the script. So python hello world.py will run the script. And now we've executed this little program. What we can also do is we can run IPython, and this is an incredibly interesting interactive version of Python, where we now can do things like, let's say, x is hello, and y is world, 
And now we can do print x and y. And now we printed hello world using these variables. And these variables are now available to us. So if we just type x, this interactive version of Python will give us access to that. So we're going to exit out of that again. So let's look at one more thing. And then we're going to also look at VS Code. So let's go up one folder here. CD dot dot gets you back one folder. And let's go into the notebooks folder here. Now we can run our own notebooks here now. So we can type Jupyter notebook, and then this will take a second. And now, well, this now opened up in Edge. I wanted it to open up in Firefox, but it doesn't really matter. So we now get an instance of Jupyter. And in Jupyter, which works very similarly to Google Collab, we can now open up these notebooks. It'll take a second. And then we have a very similar environment to what we have seen on Google Collab. And now I can also run these notebooks in my own browser, running them on my own system. So we have various possibilities of running Python here. We can run Python within this environment here, which is called the shell. We can run notebooks and we can also run interactive Python using IPython. Okay, so let's have a look at VS Code. So I'm going to open up VS Code because VS Code is a great code editor. So I'm going to type code into the search bar here and this should get us Visual Studio Code. I'm going to open this up for the first time. This is what it looks like. Let's maximize that window. And now we have this editor. Now within Visual Studio Code, we can now open files and I'm just going to show you how to do that. So we are going to open up our folder here and then we're going to open up this hello world.py file. And now, as you can see, we already have syntax highlighting and we can see the code here. And now, which is a very interesting thing, Visual Studio Code now asks us if we want to install the recommended extensions for Python. And we definitely want to do this because Visual Studio Code has this Python extension that makes working with Python a lot easier and also a lot more fun. So we're just going to install that and it will take a second. And again, I'm going to pause the video until this has been downloaded and installed. All right, this is now finished and we can see that it's now installed. Let's go back to our Python file here, the hello world.py. And now down here, we can see that Python is being loaded and we're getting an error message here that Visual Studio Code does not know which version of Python to use, which interpreter to use. So we're going to click on select interpreter now, and it should already have registered that we have Anaconda installed. So we are going to pick Python 3.85, Anaconda 3, click on that. And now we are definitely ready to go. And the cool thing is, so now we have a good editor and we also have this button up here with which we can run the code directly within Visual Studio Code. And if I click that, we don't have to use the command line interface that we just looked at. Well, indirectly, we're going to use it, but we just press on run code. And now Python starts up. And now a couple of commands are being run automatically. We don't have to worry about that too much. And then our code is being executed. Now, let's say I want to change that from hello world to let's say hello earth. And I'm going to save that briefly and then run it again. And now, again, Visual Studio Code is going to do a couple of things here and it's going to run our code in here. And this is really, really useful and an easy way of doing this. So great code editor that will also help you with a couple of things. So for example, if you type print, it will show you the command that's available. And then if you have these brackets, it will also tell you exactly what goes in here. This looks a little bit daunting at first, but if you get the hang of it, this will actually help you a lot in figuring out how this actually works. So let's add something here. Let's, for example, add a new line, save that just to draw this a little bit more out here to make this more space. And then we see hello earth, new line, hello earth, new line, hello earth, and so on. And so you can use this very neatly to work with that. Of course, this extension also does a lot more. Visual Studio Code does a lot more, but this is what you need to know for this workshop. All right, have fun coding. And of course, you can always have a look at the documentation of these things. There are lots of YouTube tutorials and there's lots more you can actually do with these tools.